Are you tired of your Asus ROG Ally booting into this? Are you spending more time trying to scroll through all these boxes to the game you want to play instead of actually playing? Do you wish you had more detail, categories, and control? That's where Play Night comes in. At the low, low price of free, you can have all of this and more. Categories, descriptions, artwork, and all your games in one spot. Call now and we'll even throw in how long to beat data at no extra charge. Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Billy Mays. Nope, I'm Joey. And today we're going to be looking at how to replace your Armory Crate and Emulation Station with a better front end called Play Night. And we're going to use that for all of our games on the ROG Ally. For the newer users, a front end is basically a console-like interface that has all of your games, artwork, and everything all in one place. So you can then just launch a game, play it for a bit, exit out, and it'll jump right back into that console-like interface. And so it makes it very easy for you to just jump around. We want to achieve the same exact result here on the ROG Ally. And as of right now, it's not there yet. But with something like Play Night, we can get there. And so right now you're probably doing this with Armory Crate, which isn't the best as you can sort of tell that it takes a lot to get going and there's only just one page. So not so much in the way of categories or descriptions or thumbnails or really anything else. And if you were to add all of your games onto that one section, I don't even know if it would handle it, especially if you have a large library. Unless you plan on putting all of your games as non-Steam games into Steam, which will take you quite a while, we needed a better option, and so I showed it in the beginning, but Play Night is the better option. And so this video will go over all of the setup that you need to get it running and get to the state that I showed at the beginning of the video. And the point of this video is to avoid having multiple front ends and launchers for all of your video games. So that's where Play Night comes in as the one stop shop for everything that you need. And I found myself with a little bit of time as I'm waiting for my two terabyte Western Digital to arrive. And so I thought I would make this video to help everybody out. I also have a link in the description with all of the ROG Ally accessories that I'd recommend, and so that might help you as well. I showed it earlier, but here's Play Night. Play Night can be used as your front end launcher for every single game, platform, emulation system, whatever you want. It's honestly the best front end that I've personally used, and I love it. Your Ally can boot right into it, completely avoiding having to touch anything with Windows. Once inside, you navigate around with your controller, head to whatever tab you'd like, create more if you want, see information about your game, including how long to beat data, and honestly, so much more. It also has customizable themes. The one I'm using is called J Hero. So enough about all that. How do we get to this spot? And if you followed my guide for Emudeck, then you're already 90% of the way there. We just need to get you the rest of the way. So let's talk about prep work. And so I'd advise using a mouse and keyboard for this setup guide, like I did for Emudeck, or use a remote desktop connection with a mouse and keyboard, of course. There's a lot of typing and a lot of moving around that it makes it so much easier if you have a mouse and keyboard. And also before you install Play Night, I would install all of your storefronts. So that means Steam, EA, GOG, whatever you're using, Battle.net, all of them just Put them on and if you want to install some games as well, it would be helpful, but it's not really needed. Just get those storefronts on and then we'll install PlayNet as well. I'm obviously not going to show all of that of installing Steam and, and that sort of thing. It's Windows. I'm going to assume that you're familiar enough with Windows or even the Linux side to install storefronts and especially Steam. So get them all on there and then come back and we'll continue with the next part. It's also going to help you if you have your emulators installed. And so that's why if you've done Emudeck, then you're already there. But if you haven't done Emudeck, and let's say you have some of your own emulators, try and get as many of them on there as you can before starting this guide. It honestly doesn't make a huge deal, but it is something to help you out a little bit. Once that's all done and you've got all your storefronts and emulators set up, and maybe some games as well, we're good to move on to the next part. Makes things a lot easier. I'll have links for everything in the description. Head to the Play Night website, Click the green download button and then open the executable and click options. I'd advise a portable installation and I'm going to put mine in the C drive. 
Just select the C drive or wherever you want it installed and you're good to go. Click install. Once it's loaded, click next. And now this is where we can connect Playnight to any storefronts that you have games on that you want. The steps are basically the same for all of them. You can also choose not to do this if you don't want to for whatever reason. For each storefront, just click connect account and then authenticate. The other settings are up to you. If you click import not installed games, it's going to show the entire storefront library of your purchased games in Playnight. So up to you if you want that. Once you're done with all the storefronts, you'll be brought to Playnight's desktop mode. This is important as Playnight has two modes, desktop and full screen. Full screen is the console like front end that I showed earlier, where all your games are easily launchable using the controls. This mode here is more for changing settings and doing behind the scenes things like we're going to today. But you can also launch games here if you want. Just kind of defeats the purpose of a gaming device experience. You should see an update at the top saying importing games from your services. And you'll start to see your games populate on the left side, depending on how big your library is. Let's change some Playnight settings while that's happening. Head to the controller top left and then settings and click minimize Playnight to system tray so that Playnight will always stay open. Also click launch in full screen mode and launch Playnight when you start your computer. This will make it so that when you start the ROG Ally, it goes right into full screen mode and you get a console like experience right away. If you do choose this option, we'll need to jump into Armory Crate and turn off the setting to start up with Windows. That's just to avoid them both showing up at the same time. Don't worry, Armory Crate still works even if you use the button shortcuts, it just stops it from popping up right at Windows Startup. Back into Playnight now, and if you head to the Auto Close Client section, it gives you the option to automatically close your clients when you close a game that was using it. So for example, if you choose to run an EA or Steam game from Playnight, and you stop playing, you can have it close the EA or Steam app so it's not running in the background. I personally want this feature for all clients since I don't have any of them running at startup and I'm going to enable it. Your services might still be syncing like mine, but don't worry, let's move on. Before we talk about emulators, a question you're likely to have is how do you add games that are not part of a service? Since all we've done is add games from services, what about others? And I'm not going to ask questions about where you got them. Head to the controller icon top left, add game, scan automatically. Click scan folder and navigate to the game folder and select folder. Playnight will search for executables in that folder. Select the correct one as sometimes there's a few depending on the game and then add games. If the thumbnail, title, and information are wrong after, keep watching. I talk about how to fix that a little bit later on. Okay, let's talk about emulators. For the people that followed my emudeck guide, you're pretty much set to go. You don't need to do anything here. But if you haven't, this is the part where I suggest that you have emulators set up, at least one of them, just so you can get an idea of how to handle the rest. I'm not going to be showing how to install emulators on their own since the emudeck guide covers all of that. That's just not the point of this guide, but get them installed on your own if you like and then come back. So now with our emulators all set up, how do we get those games into play night? That's what's next. Head to the controller icon, library, and configure emulators. Click import at the bottom, then scan folder. And if you're one of the people that followed the emudeck guide, Navigate to the emudeck folder on your C drive that has all the emulators. If you remember, the path is what I'm showing on screen, it being your C drive, users, whatever your name is, emudeck, emulation station, DE, emulators folder. 
You should see CEMU, Citra, Dolphin, Retroarch, and all of the emulator folders here. Whatever you chose to install during the Emudex setup guide. Click select folder and it'll take some time to scan. Click import. Click save at the bottom. If you did all your emulators yourself, you can repeat these steps for all your emulator folders. It's the same idea. And so I wasn't clear about this in my last video and I apologize, but I can't exactly show you where to get ROMs or BIOS files. It's something that you're gonna have to source yourself and Google is a great place to start as well as Reddit, just to be subtle about where to check. I saw a lot of comments in my last video asking about where to get ROM files and BIOS files. And so I thought I would address it here because we're talking about it again. Head to the controller icon, add game and emulated game. Then click add scanner and you wanna change the following fields. Scan with emulator, Choose the emulator, so Retroarch in this scenario. Profile, and besides Retroarch, the other emulators usually only have a default profile. For Retroarch, in this case, you want to select the core you'll be using for Super Nintendo. So SNES 9X in this case. Then click the scan folder icon and find your ROMs for that emulator. So we'll be headed to where Emudec has our ROMs. For me, that was on my SD card, so my D drive. Last thing we want to do is have this automatically search for new games if we add them. So click save as auto scan configuration and name it. I chose SNES. A question you likely have here is what RetroArch core should I use for each system? And how did I know that I should use SNES 9X for Super Nintendo? And the easiest answer is to copy what Emudex set up. And again, this only applies to those people. If you head into Emulation Station, like we set up in the last video, and then the main menu, which is the Start button, head to Other Settings and Alternative Emulators. You can see here what emulators are being used for each platform. If it says standalone next to it, it's not using Retroarch. I'll put this list in my description to make it easier for you than having to go back and forth on this screen. But keep in mind, I don't have all emulators installed, so if you have more than I do, this is how you can check it. Back to Play Night. Let it scan. It'll take a while for some of the disc-based games. Once done, you'll get a screen like mine, and then you can just click Import. You should see the games in your library now. You'll basically want to repeat the step for every emulator you have. And just to further show you which emulator or RetroArch core you want to assign to each platform, I'm going to show you my settings for each of the ones I've installed on screen. Just remember your scan folder would be different depending on where you installed Emudeck to. Let's get our theme installed. This will make full screen experience look as awesome as possible, like I showed in my opening. Head to the controller icon, add-ons, and under the browse section, themes full screen. There's a bunch here and each have their own configuration, settings, and all of it is usually with a GitHub or Playnight forums link. For this guide, I'm gonna choose JHero and then click install. You'll have to restart Playnight after this, so go ahead and do it. If you get booted into full screen mode, head to the three lines 
on the top right and click switch to desktop mode. We now have the emulator set up. We have the games linked to that emulator for Play Night to launch. Let's get them to show as their own category in the theme we just installed. Click the filter icon at the top. It looks like a funnel. And now you'll see on the right a whole bunch of options to filter your library. Head to platform and choose the platform you want to filter. So Super Nintendo for me. My entire library just got filtered by Super Nintendo games. Now head to the save icon on the right and click that and set a name. Now to rewind a bit, when I showed you Play Night in the beginning, you likely noticed that each console platform had a cool looking image as their tab. And that comes from the theme you use. So when naming filters, you have to match the name of the image the theme uses to get that to show. So for example, in this guide, I'll be showing the J-Hero theme. And if I navigate to Play Night's folder on the C drive where I installed it, and the themes, full screen, J-Hero, icons, filters folder, you can see all the images here and their names. So when creating your filters, just match the names. Super Nintendo is the one I need for SNES games. So let's head back to Play Night and write that in. Make sure to select the second checkbox to show as a quick filter. To help you out, here's the right filter names to get the images to show for J-Hero for these platforms. Just repeat these steps for each until you have a list like mine. A question you're going to have at this point is some of your games are missing the thumbnail and the right title, information, everything. An easy way to see this is in desktop mode. If you click the grid icon at the top, your library will now show in thumbnails. The ones without will be easy to see. The way to fix this is to right click on the game and click edit. Then click download metadata at the bottom and the IGDB option. Now this acts like a search. It's wonky sometimes. For example, Pokemon sometimes needs the accented E to be found. But in this case, the option I need is right on screen. So just click it and choose select. It'll ask about importing that data and select. Now click save. Now we have a thumbnail, perfect. For ROM hacks, sometimes it can't find the game. And so another option is to right click on the game and click edit. Then head to the media tab. And if you click the globe internet icon, it'll basically do a Google search for images for the game. Pick the one you want for icon, cover, and background, and you're good. The general tab is also where you can change the game name and other information if you want. This last part is optional, but I showed you that I had how long to beats data on my game detail screen. For those unfamiliar, how long to beat is a website that basically just tells you how long it takes to beat a game. So if you want that information like I have, we're going to head to the controller icon, add-ons and under browse go to the generic section. There's a lot of plugins here and you can spend a lot of time going through them all. For right now, all we want is how long to beat. So install it and then restart play night. Again, you might get booted back to full screen mode. So just head back to desktop mode. Once it's installed, head to the controller icon, extensions, how long to beat, and download plugin data. Since it's our first run, you can keep the default settings and click download. It's going to go through your entire library and match where it can to its website to get the data. It might take some time if you have a large library. Perfect time to check on your loved ones. If you want to see it after, 
click the H icon on the left bar and uncheck both filters. You should see all the data for every game. Some games might not show up if the extension couldn't match the titles. So to fix that, right click on any game that's missing the data, how long to beat, view how long to beat's data, and now you have to match it yourself. So for example, Yoshi's Cookie is Yoshi's Cookie. Done. One last thing we should talk about is Armory Crate's game profiles. There might be some confusion with how this works, but you won't get any game profiles unless you actually add the executables to Armory Crate. That means every single PC game, but not every ROM or emulator game. So if we jump into my Armory Crate, you'll see here all the emulators we added are here. Playnight's full screen and desktop, both of which are in the Playnight folder and other PC games, I still haven't added everything. It takes forever. Now, I highly, highly suggest you add your emulators here as well as both play nights. And the reason being is that you can set them to use gamepad mode and whichever power profile or fan profile you want. Let me show you mine for each emulator. This is still a work in progress, so don't take it as gospel. You might need a higher profile for some games. For all these emulators, games, and Playnight full screen, I would set them to gamepad mode. For Playnight Desktop, I would set that to Desktop Controls. It works perfectly. The very last tip that I have in Armory Crate is that I would highly suggest setting Alt F4 as a macro to one of your buttons. I have mine set to M1 in gamepad mode. Yes, this does mean that one wrong button press and my game closes, but it hasn't been an issue for me and there are still some emulators that the button combination of start and select doesn't close them. So you have no other way to close them besides the three finger swipe up gesture as an alternative. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's see what all that hard work accomplished. Head to the controller icon, then switch to full screen mode. This is the full screen experience. I'm here on the games tab, which is all games. And then we have all our platforms. Pushing the start button on the ally and you can add a game to the favorites list. Pushing the Y button will let you search for a game. 
And then R3 can filter the list further if you want. There's lots of options here. You can also go into any game and click the detail button, which is A. You should see all the same information that I do. If the description is missing or the how long to beat information is missing or anything else, it just means it wasn't added. So check to see how long to beat knows which game it is or that you have the right game when updating it through IGDB, like I showed before. But from here or from the main platform menu, we can just jump into a game. So click play and off you go. I mentioned it before, but most emulator games, assuming you set up emu deck like I did, it's start plus select to exit and get back to play night. But for PC games and later emulators like Yuzu, for example, going to have to alt four with the macro. Start plus select should work for other emulators, but just doesn't seem to right now. Just make sure you save before you exit. That's the whole workflow. You can stay in here forever. If you ever want to get back to desktop mode for play night, push the select button or navigate to the three lines up top and do switch to desktop mode. There's also a settings section here if you want to mute the menu music or change other things around. I said it before, but there's a lot you can customize and do with play night. We just scratched the surface with this video. And that's it. You should be at a playable state now for all of your games. And no more windows if that's been an issue for you. Just games. I hope this guide was helpful for you. Share in the comments below any tips or tricks you found with play night to make your experience better. It might help some others. Play night is an awesome experience and an awesome front end. There's a lot you can do and hoping to learn some things as well as I go along. If you liked today's video, feel free to check out my other videos on screen, like my MU Deck setup guide, if you haven't seen it already. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow, and hope you all have a good one.